We're here first to explore the yoga of radiant presence. It's a very peculiar condition of this experience. It presents as if it was two worlds simultaneously. We're all very familiar with this, but um, most people may not be aware of that. Uh, there's the one world of experience, and there's the other world of interpretation. There's the world of uh, 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 an imaginary picture that you have in your mind of what is occurring. And these two worlds are two different worlds. They are related, but they are not the same. They are fundamentally. For example, people carry around a picture of a fixed objective world that is stable and doesn't move. So you may easily feel that you're in a room and the room is sitting here and it's stable and objective. You, you move your head around, you see everything moving, but your intelligence tells you, oh, everything's not moving, everything's sitting here, it's fixed and still. It seems to be moving because your head's moving. <clears throat> so there's these two worlds, the world where when you move your head, everything moves, and when you move your head, it doesn't. The world where you, when you move your head, things aren't moving is an imaginary world. The real world, when you move your head, everything moves. In the real world, things get bigger, things get smaller. In the imaginary world, my hand is always the same size. It just looks bigger because it's here. It looks smaller because it's out here. Now, the way we've all been um, trained, indoctrinated. Most people think of these two worlds as being the same. They don't aware that there's two worlds. They, these two, these two perspectives are superimposed and held to be the same thing, which is fine as far as bumbling your way through life. It works out all right, but it's useless as far as discovering what you actually are, what this actually is. So for spirituality, the imaginary world is a world of delusion. The conceptual world is a world of delusion. The interpretive world is a world of delusion. The world where the room sits still and doesn't move does not exist. It only exists as a fantasy in your imagination, if you're holding it there. So yoga of radiant presence basically consists of coming to recognize the existence of these two worlds and to recognize the fact that the world of interpretation is imaginary, inaccurate, not what it seems to be. And the actual world, the real world, is the world of experience. This can be intricate to explore because of the depth of our and, and lifelong duration of our indoctrination in the living in this interpreted world. We're really, really good at it. And it's, it goes very deeply into our concepts, into our psychology, into the way our mind works. We're really very deeply in the habit of orienting to things as if the interpreted world was the actual world. Um, which is backwards, because it is not. The, the, the experiential world is the actual world. So the practice of yoga radiant presence consists of noticing the nature of the actual world, the nature of experience, and noticing that it, the ways in which it does not correspond to the imaginary world, the interpreted world. And as one does, as one proceeds in this, one discovers the fundamental and profound nature of the difference between the two. They're not just two slightly versions of different versions of the same thing. The experiential world is profoundly and utterly different. The experiential world by its very nature is, is amazing. Whereas the interpreted world, the imaginary world, is dull and stiff and small and limited and um, very ossified and frozen. So in, in essence, that's the entirety of spirituality right there. We have samsara and nirvana. 
in the interpreted imaginary world and the real world of actual presence, the actual world of radiant presence.